Women's Missionary Union or WOM Women on Mission or, or so many wonderful ministries that come out of this, our RAs, our GAs. Um, you, uh, uh, the ladies who went to Birmingham, Alabama on that mission project, that, that historical look. Um, our, our Women's Missionary Union is, is worthy of you prayerfully considering how you might financially give during the month of Heck Jones to, to support them. So keep that in mind. You'll find that in there. Tonight we will start experiencing God at 5 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. Everybody should come. If you've never done experiencing God, you need to be here to be a part of it because it really is that wonderful. And it's not experiencing God. It, it really is the God that we get to encounter. So I encourage you to be here at 5 o'clock. Miss Cindy is going to take up the mantle. Thank you, Cindy, for being a good leader. Thank you very much. Um, and then uh, our youth next Sunday. Everybody come and invite your buddies. Next Sunday, our youth will be holding an a, um, after-church spaghetti Valentine's meal. Um, so we want you to come to be a part of that. Be ready to come and stay and eat next Sunday um, so, it, uh, so we can help support them and all. The goal is, is to help generate some funds for them going to camp this summer and the ministry projects that, that they get to be a part of. So, so put that on your calendar. Be aware. Be ready. Um, there's lots of other interesting things going on. We see night activities. There's your flyer for the, um, the, the Heck Jones Focus this month. Take time to, to uh, excuse me, go through there. My name's Daniel. I want to welcome you to worship before. Oh, yeah, 4 o'clock today. Thank you. And what am I thinking about, Miss Cindy? Uh, today at 4 o'clock, um, our, our um, grace teams, you remember grace teams, God reaching all, excuse me, the gospel reaching all communities everywhere. We'll be going on a prayer drive today. Um, and, and it really is just what it sounds like. You're invited to come. You can drive around our neighborhood or you can just get in one of our church vehicles with me and, and literally drive around. We want to pray for some of the areas in the month of February that we've been canvassing, some of the areas that we will be canvassing. So be here today at 4 o'clock uh, as we drive around and pray for our community, pray for salvation, pray for um, a sense of revival to spark up around us. So with all of that said, again, I'm Daniel, and I want to welcome you to worship. If you're visiting with us, just take a moment and fill out that little visitor's card in front of you, and you could hand that into the offering plate. We just want to send you a letter that says welcome. And... Somebody hold up a golden ticket. The yellow card. There you go. Miss Betty was quick on it. Oh, Miss Melanie's got one too. But right in front of you, there's a little yellow prayer card. We take prayer very seriously at Lillington Baptist. And if you want to fill that out today with a special prayer request, and again, you can place that in the offering or uh, offering plates or in the box or, or hand it to one of us. And, and you know that we'll pray for that every day this week. Okay? Uh, again, welcome. God bless. Let's worship our living Savior together. Pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. Each day is precious. We thank you for the many blessings you give us. Lord, our ability to go out and earn a living, provide for our families. We bring back a portion of that to you now, Lord. It's already yours to start with. Lord, we ask to take these blessings, bless the gift, bless the giver, use to further your kingdom. Amen. As we journey into our congregational prayer time, of course, we're going to we're going to be praying for um, some of our, our church family members and those needs that are going on. But, but there are some church leaders who are going to be leading the way um, over the next several months. Um, and I just want to spend a few moments praying for them, especially our, our deacons who, who serve and lead our congregation. Would you join me in praying for them right now? Let's bow our heads. And Heavenly Father, I just pray for our deacon body and the leadership that they take up in the coming days. I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide them, convict them, lead them in special ways. I pray that you would supply for them every resource and tool that they need in the precious name of Jesus to, to, to minister to your church, to expand your kingdom. Father, equip them for the things that are in front of them. Father, we know that you have this as all things just in the palm of your hands. So bless our deacons lead and guide them if you're sitting there and you have a special need would you raise your hand with me if you have a, yes I see you thank you I see you yes ma'am yes ma'am yes sir I see you yes sir yes sir I see you yes ma'am yes ma'am these are special needs yes ma'am I just want to pray for you 
and, and just know that, that whatever your issue is, God has you. God has this, and He loves you. Heavenly Father, for all of these raised hands, we just ask in some way that, that You would bring healing, that You would bring rescue, that You would reach out and do something and turn a story around for Your glory and for Your benefit. Father, I pray that, that where a special sense of Your Holy Spirit or, or spiritual revival is needed, that you, would, that You would provide that with each one of those raised hands. And for each one of us, Father, here this morning, we put our minds before You and our hearts before You and ask that in some way You would lift us up today. In some way You would convict us and turn our lives around and shape us to look more like Your Son. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When I first heard this poem, I was about 16 years old. I was attending something that was called Boys State. Have you ever heard of Boys State? There's ladies, if you have, there's also a girl state. Okay. But it was a program where, where we would go and learn about you know, civics, government, um, for, for a little while in the summertime. And I was chosen for my community to be able to go with a couple of my buddies. And, and one of the leaders there at the end of that journey read this poem to us, loved this poem, because I believe that there are some called to build bridges. I believe that there are some called to build bridges from from one place to another. And the, the poem talks about doing an older person doing it for a younger person and that bridge that's built around. But man, there, there, I believe that there are some of us that are called to, to build bridges, maybe from earthly things to spiritual things, from hard things to encouragement. You know, we've been talking about the second chair issues. There are first chairs. And if you're a first chair, if you're a first chair leader, we thank you for that. You know, first chair leaders are, are those that God has placed in the front like Moses. Like Moses. But then there are people that God also called, called to help support Moses. And we've been looking over some of those characters. We're going to look over two more today. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them to Exodus chapter 31. And we're going to discover two bridge builders. They're not called to be first chairs. But they are, they are called to build bridges. And we're going to see how God calls them. All of us then second chair people. Listen today. Because your position is powerful. It's significant. And God's calling you and wants to use you as well. So again, Exodus chapter 31. If you'll stand with me, I will read aloud. And you can read silently. And I'm going to pick up in verse 1 and read down through verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen, chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge, and all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. Moreover, I have appointed, uh, I have appointed Oholeb, son of us, excuse me, Ahasamach, let's just call him Ahi, okay? Of the tribe of Dan to help him. Also, I have given skill to all the craftsmen to make everything I have commanded you. The tent of meeting, the ark of testimony, with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent, the table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand and all its accessories, and the altar of incense. The altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, with, with the, excuse me, the basin with its stand, and also the woven garments, both the sacred garments of, for Aaron the priest and the garments for his son when they serve as priests, and the anointing oil and fragrant incense for the holy place. They are to make you. They are to make them just as I commanded you. May God bless His word among us. Please be seated. Uh, uh, so we, we've been looking, of course, at some, some characters, and there's one I wanted to pause and look at, and I have to tell you about him real quick, because he's not in this section, but he's important for this section, and he's the name, the, he's her. He's her. It's fun to say out loud. He is her, H-U-R. 
Her was that character in Scripture where, where the people of Israel were going out to fight. And, and as, long as, they, as long as Moses held his hands up, do you remember this story? As long as Moses held his hands up, the people of Israel were victorious. But, but when his hands faltered, they were not so much. And, and two people came. Two people came just to hold his hands up. Aaron and Hur. Hur is one of those supporting characters that, that we haven't talked about. But Hur played a role because Hur was a supporter. Her, her, her lifted up. When somebody else's strength failed, Moses' strength failed, Hur was there to help that. And that's going gonna, gonna to kind of carry you through. So the people of Israel have been freed from the, the nation of, of Egypt. They have, they have tracked out on their exodus and, and they're now wandering in the wilderness. And as they wander around the wilderness, God calls Moses to build a tabernacle. Can you say that word with me? Tabernacle. And one more time. Tabernacle. It's actually one of my favorite Old Testament words. It's fun to say, okay? But also for its meaning. The tabernacle is before the temple. And to, taber to tabernacle means to dwell. The tabernacle was the dwelling place of God while the people wandered through the wilderness. They wandered around and around. And you remember how it goes, right? But wherever the, 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 that, that, that fire and smoke and, and, and pillar went uh, of clouds went before them, they followed. But where it landed on the ground, that's where they settled and set up the tabernacle. The tabernacle held lots of things that, that we've read about. Most importantly, most importantly, it held the Ark of the Covenant and it held the presence of God. I mean, like we believe that wherever two or more are gathered, God will be there, right? But can you imagine God showing up in a tent in the wilderness, really, with the people of Israel? Just one of my favorite Old Testament lessons, the tabernacle, because the same God that tabernacled with the people of Israel tabernacles with us because of the death of Jesus Christ, his resurrection and the gift of the Holy Spirit. God still dwells with us. We're not alone. Um, just in case you didn't know, that was a great section to say, amen. OK, <laughs> uh, then the Lord said to Moses, and we're going to hit some important parts here in this passage because the, the theological ramifications of God talking to somebody like have you ever have you ever heard from the Lord? Now, I've never heard God audibly speak to me, but I've, I've had his senses, his inclinations of walk through the doors of obedience. I believe I have heard from the Lord, but I've never heard from him audibly. Here, the Lord speaks to Moses. I mean, can you imagine what that voice sounds like? Number one, the Almighty, I mean, could, could our eardrums really contain that? God speaks to Moses. What this tells us is, number one, God is revealing. God reveals himself. There was something that Moses did not know that God was going to illuminate for Moses. So not only is he revealing, he's gracious in revealing it to people. In fact, if you come back tonight for experiencing God, where we start going through some of these, these, these are some, some of the lessons that are brought out of how do we listen? How do we learn from God? Anything that we get to know about God, anything is because he is gracious enough to reveal who he is unto us. Anything, you know, for us to know about, for us to have holy scriptures, for us to know about who Jesus Christ, for you to have an inclination from reading the scripture, you know, those little spiritual movements that we get. What a grace. Because God is revealing himself unto us. First chair people, please pay attention. Remember last week we talked just for a moment about how your leadership first chair is spiritual. Well, what does that actually mean? That means in some way we want you to hear from God. How do you hear from God? You open God's word. You remain in his counsel. You, you, you pray to him. You look for where he is acting and speaking. I mean, those are just really practical things. But first chair people, 
There are some things that you don't know. That's what we're talking about. The first chair people who are in front, like a Moses person, please pay attention because God can reveal himself to us. And what does he reveal to Moses here? He reveals to Moses that there's two other characters that he wants Moses to pay special attention to. In some way, Moses had to be attuned to God's spiritual work and two other people in all of the nation of Israel. I want to say it like this, first chair people. Be aware of what God is doing. Be aware of what God is doing and join that. First chair people. Now, second chair, we're going to talk to you for the rest of the time. But first chair people, please realize that your greatness, your your leadership, your position of authority may be held so that you can help make somebody else a leader. Please, first chair people, understand God wants to talk to you and we want you to hear from the Lord just like Moses did. But as you do that, be aware and be perceptive to what God is saying what he is doing, where he is doing it, because he may be doing that in somebody else's life, and it may be time for you to pay attention to them. Let me put it to you like this. There is a profession in the world that is called headhunters. Horrible name. I mean, it sounds like, sounds like something horrible, doesn't it? Do you know what a headhunter does? A headhunter goes and finds somebody of a particular profession because somebody needs those skills And he researches them and he finds them and brings them back to that company that wants that so that they could hire them, so that they could find somebody in that particular area or that particular profession, a headhunter. First chair people, what if you were spiritual headhunters? In a good way. That you were so perceptive to what God was doing, what he was saying, how he was moving, even in the lives of other people. So that when the time came, you could raise them up too. The first chair people, be a spiritual headhunter. Watch for what God's doing in other people. Help them to raise up. So not only, not only are you paying attention to God's word and reading it. Not only are you being prayerful. Not only are you gathering to study it with other people. But you're watching for it to be evident in somebody else's life. And you see that character and that talent, that skill or where that presence of God rise up. And that's what we want you to magnify. All of that from a beginning of. Then the Lord said to Moses. Verse 2. See I have chosen Bezalel. Son of Uri. And the son of her. No. The, the son of. Uh, excuse me of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God. So now second chair people, let's start sinking our teeth into this as well. Number one, there are two characters, um, uh, Bezalel and, and um, oh, excuse me, Oliab, and, and they have a calling under God. Now their calling isn't to be Moses. Please pay attention. Their calling is to be what God designed them to be. They're both skilled craftsmen. They have an art form. And notice how this passage talks about how they're skilled and talented. Okay? Um, God says, I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and all kinds of skill. For these two characters, their skills, their talents, their equipping is God-inspired. It's divine. It has a purpose. So if I, if I say that for these characters, guys, I think it's true for all of us. That God made you. That God designed you for a reason. And whatever skills and talents you have, I, you know, he, he designed you with those skills and talents for a reason. Second chair people, you are significant in the divine plan. You have a, a part to play. And, and God designed you uniquely to play that part. You're special. Just like these two people who were skilled. And they, they had artistic skills. They could mold and cut uh, metal and stone. Because in Egypt, Egyptians educated all of their citizens. 
even their slaves, to do something. These two were educated while in slavery to Egypt on these two crafts along with their families. And that's what they were skilled to do. That even in hard times, God was designing them for a glorious time. God has a purpose for second chair people. Whatever skills and designs you are, now pay attention. Here's the linchpin. Here's the, the kicker. We don't have to use our skills and talents for His glory. We can choose not to. We cannot answer the call. But that's not what we're asking for this morning, are we? The plea is to answer the call. Second chair people, you're designed for a reason by God. And He wants you to fulfill that purpose right now. You're significant. Excuse me. My grandfather was a, a giant. Like I'm, some of you consider me tall. And, and he had a few inches on me. And can you imagine, my grandfather passed away when I was a young boy. And, and to, I mean, that old saying about being knee high to a grasshopper, that was me to him. He was a great guy. I mean, a pastor, loved the Lord. His name was William. Everybody called him Bill. Um, and, and my grandfather never used a slang word. Like, no gosh, no darn, no oh my. And he said what he meant, and he meant what he said. But he was also very kind and sweet and generous. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't rigid. He was, he was actually a very compassionate person. My grandfather had a saying. He said, if God called you to be a ditch digger, you'd have to step down to be president. Man, I've always loved that. Second chair people, you may not be called to be Moses, but you're divinely significant. And so if you're called to dig ditches or build the tabernacle or to help support the bridge or build the bridge or be the bridge, you have this divine significance. And if God calls you to do that, whatever it is, answer that call. Because you'd have to step down to do anything else. Anything else. Second chair people, you were divinely significant. So there are these two characters and they each have tasks and jobs to do. I, I do want to read them aloud because, because they become really important. Not, not only these two characters, but, but, but these two characters also were tasked with finding other like people. So um, let's see here. Uh, I've given, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm like halfway through verse 6. Also, I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything that I have commanded you. So it's not just these two skilled workers. It's every skilled worker that God designs. It's, it's every one of us. It's all of us. And then what did they make? The tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant of Law, with the atonement cover in it, all the other furnishings of the tent, the table, its articles, the pure gold lampstand and all its accessories and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings and all its utensils, the, the, the basin with its stand and also the woven garments, both the sacred garments of Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when, when they are priests. So, so they go about the skilled process of actually building the tabernacle. Um, the ark, which contained the presence of God, the, the, the tablets uh, with the Ten Commandments, the rod of Aaron, the, the jar of manna, the, they are tasked with putting these things together. Can you, can you imagine the task, the great task, of building something to contain the presence of God. Not, not just the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, the table, excuse me, I'm, I've skipped too far ahead. The tent of meetings, the Ark of the Covenant of the Law, with all the furnishings, uh, the, the table for the shoe bread, the, 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 the candle stands, uh, every single thing that they're making, and, and all the other, fern, the, the table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand and all its accessories, the altar of incense, so not only are they making the ark to, to, for, to contain the presence of God, but they're also making articles of worship that everybody gets to participate with. They're, they're, they're making bridges for people to be able to worship God and to be able to visit with Him in a tent. The, the two garments, the woven garments, both the sacred garments of Aaron, the priest, and the, 
garments of his son when they are priests, when they serve as priests. These two and all of the other special skilled characters designed by God, significant for a purpose so that other people can encounter God. Wow. Second chair people. You're called to be a bridge so that other people can encounter God. And and that's just as lofty as any first chair person. Second chair people, you're called to be a bridge so that other people can encounter God in worship or His presence or in study. And what, what, what I really like, these two characters, these two characters are not Levites. Now that, that, that may, I mean, that may have fallen on deaf ears for a minute. So do you remember what a Levite was? Aaron was a Levite. He's a, he's a priest. The people from the, pre, from the tribe of Levites were, were priests. Especially the second one, he was from the tribe of, of, of Dan. I mean, the, uh, we often, brothers and sisters, regulate spiritual things to people just like me when God's called every one of us. We, we want our pastors and our ministers and our Sunday school teachers to do all the spiritual efforting. But the call and the design is that every one of us, every one of us, Build a bridge from this earth so that other people can encounter God. Every one of us. You are divinely significant so that somebody else can worship the Lord. Somebody else might encounter Jesus Christ that died on the cross and that rose again. First chair people, you're our spiritual leaders. We want you to hear from God. Tell us what that is. Second chair people, you're that bridge. So there is a, a section of land um, that's called the Sanibel Causeway. Does anybody know where the Sanibel Causeway is? Where is it? Florida. That's right, it's in Florida. Oh, you know where it was. I didn't see you over there, Jerry. Sorry about that, buddy. I'll give credit where it's due. <laughs> so the Sanibel Causeway is a, a, a series of three bridges They're about six miles, I believe, long. And and they connect South Florida with Sanibel Island. The causeways, these little man-made islands are heaped up with dirt and sand. And that's where a bridge comes in. I mean, there there is one way, or there's one way to get your car to Sanibel Island. And that's through these causeways. Last year, we had a few hurricanes. Do you remember the hurricanes? Ian, I believe, was one of them. Last year, excuse me, Hurricane Ian came up and destroyed the causeway. Matthew, would you show us that picture? There's one way to get on and off the island. This is real. This is just one section of that causeway. Um, the, The bridges go and go and go. And remember, there's three of them, six miles long in its entirety. So the people, if you're, if you're like me, I'm going, well, what about the people on the island? How are they going to get off that, get their cars and their stuff and move their junk off the island? Or, or, or vice versa, how are they going to get stuff on the island so that their houses can be repaired, their cars can be repaired? We got a serious problem, don't we? I mean, this actually happened. This was last year, and the causeway is destroyed in more than one section because of a hurricane. Now, It's being repaired or has been repaired or what have you. This is all to show you one simple thing. Brothers and sisters, second chair people, do you understand the benefit of a bridge? And what happens when it's not there or not working right? The people are left alone. You are the bridge, second chair people. Like they were for Moses who came and helped to build the tabernacle so that people could meet. And worship the Lord. You're that person. That might be for your neighbor. Or your family member. Or your co-worker. Or etc. So that they have a place. Because of you. To come and worship the Lord. Now Jesus said it in a different way. In Matthew chapter 28. Do you remember what Jesus said in Matthew 28? You do. We know don't we. Go ye therefore. And all the nations. Baptizing them. Teaching them. 
you are all the same bridge that Jesus sends us out as. To provide a connection just so that that somebody who doesn't and can't might get to know God. Would you take up the calling of a second chair for people? To be a bridge. Our world needs that desperately. Your community, our, our little neighborhood right here needs Christians to be a bridge so that other people, and I don't, the bridge is now a metaphor for your skills and talents. Some of you may be woodworkers or electricians or you just may talk really well or you might know how to wash a car, balance a checkbook or help somebody do their taxes. You might know something that God wants to use because whatever your skill Whatever your talent is, it's not insignificant. It's divinely designed to accomplish the kingdom's plan so that all people can go to heaven. But what happens, brothers and sisters, when we're not the bridge? Second chair people don't rise up. and People are stuck on the island by themselves. So we're going to have an invitation in a few moments. So it's real simple. First chair people, we need you to be our first chairs. We need you to continue hearing from God. So would you commit first chair people to stay focused on God's calling? Be perceptive to what he's doing around you and in other people. And then share that with all of us. Second chair people, would you hear today that you have a divine purpose? And would you answer that purpose? Our world needs that today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these moments that we've had together and just ask that in some way that you would raise up among us missionaries right now, Father. Missionaries in neighborhoods right here. Missionaries in households. People who are building bridges right now. Would you raise up second chair people ready to serve your kingdom's cause with whatever skill or talent that you've given. Father, you know us all. So you know how you've gifted us. We know how you've talented us. And we just ask that you would call us right now and help us to rise up in that. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just stand with me. Would you answer the call? First chair, second chair people today.